is Ken Sovereign, State Director of AARP Iowa. With me is Anthony Carroll, our Associate State Director for Advocacy. And before we get to the Hill, I want to thank all of you great volunteers out there. Uh, what a terrific job you did last night responding to our call. St. Patty's Day, Iowa Public Television, we were there wearing the green. Yes, we and were. And you all responded. More than $30,000 was raised while we were on stage last night. Thanks to all the wonderful AARP volunteers and members who called Yeah, in. great way to raise the green for Iowa Public Television <laughs> yeah, on St. Patrick's Day. Indeed, indeed. Well, one of the great pleasures that we have, Anthony and I, is hearing directly from our members, especially about issues that are present and clear and that we're dealing with uh, at the national level and at the Iowa General Assembly. And last week, Anthony and I had the pleasure of talking to one of our members whose direct experience reflects a bill that we're working on up at the state capitol. It's a national priority about financial exploitation of seniors. And Anthony, how are things going with that? Sure. It's House File 416. That's HF 416. And this is a proposal that looks at uh, uh, situations, well, uh, unfortunately, uh, underreported, as we know statistically nationally and in Iowa, underreported issue of financial exploitation that occurs uh, in Iowa with Iowans who represent uh, persons either as a attorneys in fact or as agents. Uh, they get in a situation where particularly uh, someone becomes older, be, they become incapacitated, and they need help with uh, someone making that uh, financial decisions for them. Uh, one of the things that this proposal came from was the Elder Abuse Task Force. It was a task force Kent, you and I served on last year, looking at elder abuse in Iowa, the status. They came up with ten recommendations, and a couple of those, one of those really honed in on financial exploitation of this issue. So it was a product of this proposal. Uh, it was something that um, we are pleased to support and try to improve uh, some of the protections uh, for people who depend on others to make their financial decisions. Yeah, before we get into the details of that 416, one of the things that I hear up at the Capitol is, well, seniors just need to make sure that they check out uh, and they trust the person uh, who they're giving this power of attorney or signing over their, their rights to. But what I hear in the reading is that the that people are more often exploited by a member of their own family that's right. than anyone else. The majority of family, that's, it's a I sad situation. I think those are people of trust, generally speaking. That's right. Well, and Kent, of course, as you know, um, let, let's start with the fact that the majority of people who serve as a, uh, attorneys, in fact, for others, uh, agents, in financial decisions, they're doing a great job. They're doing a great they're job. They're doing a good job, and, and, it's, and sometimes can be a thankless task. Right. So we're really pleased so many people take on this responsibility. Right. But unfortunately, uh, to the very question you raise, uh, you know, the really irony of this is you have situations oftentimes where you have family members um, exploiting the person that they're representing. And I think the other person, the, the uh, I think the other issue was something that was raised by the guy who called last week is not only is it was a family situation that he's dealing with, but his mother has Alzheimer's. So you have the very ironic idea of how can someone be more selective on who's representing them when they're having diminished uh, thinking capacity. So I think, again, uh, what, what this proposal does is try to look at the system we have. One of the first things it does is says, uh, if you're taking on this responsibility, you have to acknowledge in writing what your financial, your fiduciary duties are, meaning your ethical and responsibilities. It's, it's no, no different than why we have speed limit signs, um, you know, so people know these, these are your expectations. Uh, when, you, when you go down this route, uh, you understand what you're embracing, what you're getting into. That's one thing. Another thing is uh, for people that uh, go through the very high measure uh, of, of be, being determined to actually financially exploit that person that you're supposed to be representing, uh, that you can't then in terms, you've stolen from them now. Uh, and now you can't inherit from them after you've stolen, wiped out their money, that you're supposed to, uh, you, you've been entrusted with their finances. Now uh, you can't in turn go hack, go and, and, and uh, inherit from them after you've stolen all their money. So let me try to reiterate that a little bit. Yeah. Let's imagine I'm a person of trust, and as most people of trust, I'm doing the right thing. That's right. I'm taking care of business. Uh, maybe uh, another person, or maybe I exploit an individual, take, a, uh, take advantage of them financially. Uh, my understanding is that one, I'm going to be 
alerted to my fiduciary responsibilities. I'm when you front take end and educated. That's right. And the second thing is that if I have some malfeasance in my in what I do for my for my ward, if you will, I can't gain financially from that after that person has passed. Well, and, and again, keep in mind you have to be caught doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, determined to do it. And that's that's as as we hear, and that's a very high hurdle to overcome. But yes, if indeed you steal from the person you're supposed to represent, and you're found it to have steal, stolen from them, then, then and only then, yes, you, you won't be able to. So who else are we talking to about this? Who else cares about this besides and AARP? It's a good question. We've had great conversations with nursing home industry. Uh, this is one of those issues where we really have a shared con share concerns because they've seen this. This is unfortunately an uh, issue that they deal with far too often. Um, it, you have situations where uh, someone comes into a nursing home, uh, someone represents that person, is taking all their money, and now, by the way, uh, our state, we as taxpayers, have to pay for them being enrolled, uh, pay for them through the Medicaid coverage that they now have to, to get because all their money's gone. And then yet, in turn, that person who's stolen all their money uh, take, uh, reaps the result when that person person passed away, and and in some situation, unfortunately, that nursing home is stuck in the middle where uh, they can't get the money because that person has stole it, and that person dies, and they're stuck stuck holding a very hefty ba uh, he hefty price tag, and you know, and then certainly besides just the financial uh, obligations and conundrum it puts them in, it's just the morality of of what they see and and. Uh, the acknowledgement that we as a society, we as a state, need to do a better job of combating this problem. Well, I know that the, 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 the bar, the lawyers are interested in this, sure. financial advisors at banks and mm -hmm. other financial institutions and credit unions are interested in this. Uh, as you mentioned, the institutions that care for uh, our aging population care about this. So. My guess is our role, as we do so often, is to convene these folks together and see if we can find some win-win solutions and address any issues that are outstanding. Yeah, it, it's a priority for us. Uh, we, we Again, we deserve better in our state. And I think actually one, the one source of testimony presentation, that Elder Abuse Task Force that you and I sat in last year, uh, in Iowa, it came, the, one of the most compelling evidence came from one of the county attorneys that we fortunately have in Polk County who specializes in prosecuting combating elder abuse. In fact, Polk County is the only area of the state that has a special prosecutor. And she, too, uh, some of these, this, it was really uh, her, her team of folks, she sees this as a problem. She presented it as a problem and I think is really a source for some of the good ideas that we want to move forward. Well, this is a, a difficult issue and it's House File. House file 416. 416. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, contact our office at any time. Uh, we'll be posting some more information on our blog at www.aarp.org slash IA. And you'll hear more about this not only throughout this legislative session, the interim, and probably into next session. Again, thanks, Anthony. These are, these are tough issues, and as we said, we know that the vast majority of folks that are fulfilling these obligations are doing so in a just and morally upright way. Uh, but, you know, unfortunately, we have to deal with some folks who may not be on the up and up, and we're there fighting for you, representing you, for people looking to get more information about this topic, go to the Partner in Aging uh, website. We'll have this website. You can see it here right on the bottom. Uh, go to that website, and actually it's one of the first links you'll see posted is the Elder Abuse Task Force. You'll see that in that report, financial exploitation was just one of the topics. There's a lot of good discussion, a lot of thoughtful leaders you'll see that sat on this task force. Here's the tough part, putting those recommendations into action. A great way to uh, take a look at the source of House File 416 is to look at the background of where it came from. Thanks again. This is Kent Sovereign, State Director of AARP. Thanks for tuning in.